Hi, this is Jim, and this video is me flying down the west shore of Lake Erie from Roseal, which is right where the Detroit River empties into Lake Erie, down about to the Ohio line, almost to Maumee Bay. Uh, probably not the best quality video. The camera was shaking a bit, but um, if you're interested in seeing that uh, bit of the U.S., then uh, come along for the ride. So. Right here, we're taxiing out to depart from runway 17, if memory serves me correct, at Gross Hill Municipal Airport, K-O-N-Z, in my Merlin GT with a Rotax 912 on the front. And it doesn't take us long to get off the ground and climb out. Off to the right is Frenchman's Creek. It's just a canal that runs along parallel to the airport. The airport was originally a uh, naval air station, actually. Well, even before that, it was Curtis Wright Training Airfield back in the very early 1900s. But when I was a kid, it was a naval air station. When the Navy shut down, they turned control over to the uh, township. Uh, that green treed area there is Lost Island. That's a uh, I believe owned by Ford Yacht Club, which is just off to the right, almost out of view. And uh, we're climbing out over Gibraltar Bay at the south end of Roseal. That's Celeron Island, kind of right in the center of the screen. I'm going to be turning over and going over the shoreline. And for most of this trip, uh, we're going to be down around 500 feet above ground. But uh, to keep this from getting too boring, I think what I'm going to do is uh, we'll speed up from, say, 80 miles an hour to, oh, 320 miles an hour. We'll try that. Um, see, if, see if that makes time fly. So I bet you didn't know that a light sport aircraft could go 320 miles an hour. So we just crossed over Celeron Island. This is Gibraltar off here to the right, uh, mostly residential, a lot of canals in there. Uh, getting into farmland along here. We'll be coming up on Point Moulay State Game Area. There's a dike they put out into the lake, and you can dike is on the charts. Uh, that's just depicted on the chart as an open area. We'll see it in just a moment. Uh, but at this point, most of it's been filled in um, with dredgings. They build it for two reasons. One, to protect the wetlands behind the dike, and the other to provide a spoils area for dredging. Here it is. And you can see a lot of it's now full and overgrown. Uh, it used to be, back in the 80s, pretty much open all inside there. And I did go in there once with a sailboat. There's some of the open area left. And it was kind of weird, because the dike is fairly tall. It's not obvious from this video at uh, 500 feet but um, it's it, you know it blocks the wind at the surface so the water was absolutely flat and you didn't feel much wind blowing but the wind blowing over the tops of the, of the dikes uh, going overhead uh, scooted the sailboat along really pretty good speed and it was, was kind of interesting different sensation so anyhow I, at this point I'm climbing I've unleashed the uh, full might and fury of the Rotax 912 uh, thundering my way up into the sky uh, or, or not. Uh, basically, I just climbing up to two or three thousand feet to uh, give some room to that nuclear power plant there, Fermi 2, in accordance with whatever uh, whatever NOTAM that is that says stay away from nuclear power plants. And we'll be coming back down in a moment as we come around this point here, just south of Fermi 2, and we'll turn into Breast Bay. I think if you look at a map, you might guess how it got that name. There's the point. And we're getting back down to our... Uh, standard 500 foot cruising altitude 500 AGL obviously not MSL 500 MSL put me 100 feet under the water so it's mixed farmland and residential and as we get along here the the shoreline is pretty well built up uh, most of these houses have 
seawalls and things in front of the house uh, to protect them. When, when the wind blows, Lake Erie can slosh from one end to the other uh, several feet, you know, five or six feet up or down in a high water year. It threatens a lot of the shorefront property. So over the years, uh, they've evolved from sandbags to big concrete barrier walls to keep their houses uh, intact. And we're coming up on Sterling State Park. There's another dike that was built there to protect more wetlands. There's a beach along here if you want to go swimming. There's a campground, uh, some nature trails, state parky things. And I'm climbing again because we have yet another power plant. In this case, uh, DTE Energy's Monroe plant. It's one of the large, it's a large coal-fired coal plant, excuse me. Also, there's not much there in lines in the line of beach or shallow water to set down on if something goes wrong. But in any case, we'll be coming back down here, continuing our trip down the shoreline. Should be coming up on Luna Pier. Well, actually, there's a yeah. I think I was getting ahead of myself. We're not near Luna Pier. I was ahead of myself so we're yeah just coming down essentially the south end of Brest Bay here and coming up on Toledo Beach Marina just coming into the window there on the right it's a fairly good sized operation it's not in Toledo it's not on a beach they or they don't have a beach but it's called Toledo Beach for whatever reason <laughs> And I see the water tower. We should be coming up here on the actual pier momentarily. Yeah, there it is, the pier out in the in the lake. It, uh, it's pretty shallow and um, silted up in behind there. You wouldn't want to go back in there with a boat. And at this point, I'm climbing up just because uh, that's about as far as I wanted to go. I hope you found this at least a little entertaining and... Uh, you know, we're coming up that's Maumee Bay there. You can just see it up in the corner of the window. And Toledo is just about in front of the nose of the airplane as I turn there. And that's it. So I'll catch you all on the flip side. Thanks for watching.